Welcome to AP Design Digital Tools. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about kind of best practices to create uh, really good diagrams. Um, full disclosure: I'm using the uh, Rhinoceros work in progress, so this will eventually be Rhino Six. Uh, I would highly recommend uh, getting it and downloading that. Uh, you can do it for free. So you just have to apply to be one of their beta testers and uh, you can get on board with it because it has a lot of features. Um, some of them will be new to you when I go into this video, but um, that I find like just streamlines some of my processes. Uh, so anyway, all right, so <clears throat> we're going to go into kind of getting your displays right and ready for, uh, for diagramming. And we're going to go into a little bit of Illustrator and how to best kind of set up and manage uh, imagery so that you can uh, focus your work uh, and make sure that it's uh, describing what you're wanting to describe. Uh, this is our uh, AP de Design uh, desk set that we'll hopefully be having for you uh, next year. Uh, okay, so let's go into... Um, setting up your display correctly. So um, all of you have all these uh, different display modes that you've hopefully customized for the way that you work. Um, I'm going to use technical because it has a, kind of an idea of line weight that I really like. Uh, but it mm, this default mode is kind of rather uh, silly. So we're going to go into how to control that best. So I'm going to hit uh, technical settings. And in here, the first thing we're going to do, oh, I'm going to make sure this can be seen. You'll see me do things, see what they do. Is I'm going to turn on shade objects. And you can see that it's based on objects color, uh, which I control through layers. So um, wood looks like wood, uh, metal looks like metal. Uh, those are some basic ideas that I've covered in layers. Um, all right, so that that's pretty simple. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is go down to scene lighting, and I'm going to turn that off so that we get really just kind of flat look. Uh, there may be a reason why you'd want to keep that on, but for me, I'm just trying to describe something in a diagram, and I don't need lighting to be part of it. Uh, you might. <coughs> Okay, I think that's it there. Um, next thing we're going to hit is uh, objects. And we're going to specifically look at lines. Alright, so hidden line object. I'm going to turn all of these to, uh, to a single color for all hidden lines. I'm going to change this one to light gray. Uh, I often won't have this one on because it creates a huge amount of visual noise. But I'm just going to set it up correctly right now anyway. So all these other ones I'm going to just change to the uh, black. And then I'm going to ramp up the silhouette color. Because I want this to really feel like a, uh, a drawing that has a little bit of line weight. Okay, so I think we're done here. Uh, the only other thing we might change is use application setting for the background. I'm going to change that to solid and to white. I like to look at the world as if I'm working on a sheet of paper, uh, specifically when I'm drawing. It just helps me kind of, kind of not get distracted and, and make sure that when I'm printing, it's going to print what I'm seeing on screen instead of something else. So that's why I use white. Uh, there are occasions where I'll use the dark gray just because it's easier to see certain things. Alright, um, alright, then we're going to just turn off hidden lines. And I think that's it. We should be good to go. Uh, I oftentimes will create a second uh, one so that I, I don't lose the default values of the first. So this is essentially the same thing, my technical two. Alright. <coughs> Uh, other things that I'm going to be using in this video are um, in under your gear. Here, let me 
can break this out. Uh, there. Under this gear, you'll see you can. There's a series of other things you can turn on. I'm going to turn on name positions and name views. Make sure you have those two on. Once you turn them on, if the uh, menu structure isn't big enough, uh, I've found that it sometimes uh, will get a little fidgety moving these tabs around randomly. So you might just have to increase or, or lose some of the tabs you don't really need. But I'm using this uh, name views to begin with. So for each of my diagrams, I've selected a specific view that I want to lock in. Uh, I'm in the axon mode. Oftentimes I'll make diagrams with perspective mode too. It's just on a case by case basis uh, what I decide to, I need. Uh, this one I wanted to be uh, extraordinary, kind of more analytic, so I went with Axon. So th it's pretty easy to make these. You just go in there under name view, save as, call it whatever you want, and save. Say OK. I've already got it set up. And the reason I've set this up is that I'm probably going to show multiple things, uh, kind of composited over top of one another. And I want to make sure that I'm always coming back to the exact same view. Uh, also, if I start to um, start the, the the process of making the diagram and then find out oh the design needs to change, uh, and I need to update that that uh, image, uh, if I don't save this and I just do something simple as that, I'm kind of screwed. I'm going to be working all day long just trying to catch that same uh, view. This way, it's always locked in. Um, okay, uh, so then uh, let's use what's called view capture to file. And I always put a dash in it because I want to see, well, let's see what happens when I just do view to capture. It's actually a lot better situation than it used to be. Um, so you can turn that on and off. Update DPI. Actually, this is uh, a lot better than it used to be. Uh, it looks like they've they've improved this uh, this window. So let's see what happens when we say OK. Then I get to choose the file. OK, so that I'll use that one. That's pretty cool. OK, the other things that we're going to go into is uh, name position. So in um, just going to delete a couple of things. All right, so in name position, it's actually going to record the position of objects. So anything that I have selected, if it's say I want to do an exploded version of this project, so you know maybe I want to explode those two things, or maybe it's just that one. Uh, I'm just going to save. I'm going to select the object that I want to move save its position so this is the back one <coughs> and then uh, I want to move it say to there so two feet uh, say more like there's one foot okay hold uh, select that object again save say back two and now I can flip between the two pretty cool all right, so then I want to add another object to this. So maybe I want to show this shelf moving uh, up. Uh, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to uh, right-click and go Append Named Position. And then I'm going to go to Back 2, move this up, say, one foot, and Append. So it's Append is basically just adding an object to uh, uh, the set it's remembering. So now that one is saved. Pretty cool. All right. So the reason I did this, uh, I'll just go back to my main position, is that uh, this <coughs> this door on the storage unit uh, rotates on this pin here, this axis. So I'm going to show that. So there it does that. So I might as well now. Save this. <coughs> and then I have a third position. 
then you once you pivot it up, you shove it in or push it in, and it locks in place. Now, of course, there's a desktop right here, so it's that's helping you know keep it from falling at the moment. And then there's also this shelf bracket. Anyway, um, and other things that I want to show now that it's a shelf, I threw in some entourage. This, this thing here becomes a cup holder and you know a desktop so you put your sketchbook on it so now I'll view capture that uh, I recommend uh, moving up to a certain DPI that's going to be kind of worth uh, looking at so you want to set that up correctly and then we'll do that alright pretty simple